Here we are, heading north of Cape Real to the claims. <clears throat> the lake's thawed now, all the ice is gone. Mud Lake. Oh, a little bit of ice on the far side. There's that big rock, my favorite rock that makes me want to call that Rock Cut Lake. Yeah, I know, it's silly, but that's what I was doing for many years before I found out it was called Mud Lake, so it's kind of stuck. Alrighty. We're going to go into the claims. We're going to check some anomalies. I got that word down. Some anomalies. And uh, we'll do some filming out there. All right, here we are at the northern end of the claims. For the next kilometer and a half down, that's ours. It's, I don't know, half a kilometer roughly wide. That ridge there, the bottom of that ridge, all the way up to this corner up here is our claim. We've got two of them that are joined together into one that runs south. An extremely dense bush we got to get into to find the anomalies that are in the ground in here. In this area there's a lot of silver in the rocks and uh, Andy's going to grab the metal detector and play around a bit, see what we find, see if it's anything like what we found on the southern part of the claim last time we were out. So we got to Trim things up a little bit so we can get in there. We've got some small hand saws. Was that that rock? Yeah, see he's got a hit on it already. Okay, there's um, <clears throat> a lot of silver in these rocks is what it's indicating. They're dark. They're heavy. Look at that, you can actually see something glimmering. Right there, there's a shiny piece. That's not gold. Oh yeah, there you go. This stuff here, there's some iron in it, I can see it. Oh yeah, yeah, there is lots of little shinies in that baby. Uh, uh, that may not be iron, it may just be where the machine scratched it. But these babies lie all over the surface, everywhere. Um, here's an interesting one. Get the glasses back on. on the surface. Sorry, I thought it was in it. it. looked like a conglomerate. So, we have to figure out how to get into this stuff. The road was washed out on the way in in two different places. Um, well, four or five, but two that were a foot deep <laughs> and several feet wide. So, Plus five Celsius, just above freezing in Fahrenheit, a couple of degrees, and beautiful sunny day. So we're going to hack our way into the bush. All right, here we are. We're at the north end of the claim. We've made ourselves a little walking trail. Just cleared out some underbrush. Magnetics. Very small stuff. Uh, we've checked the rocks with the metal detector. Andy's run all over the place. And I lost my glasses, so he's looking for those for me. Right there in that pile on the left here, probably in there somewhere. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> using the GPS, we were able to come in and we cleared up to here. And we start searching the area where's where the GPS coordinates exactly. And it turns out they are. Where's that rock? <laughs> now I got I got to orientate myself because I was out. Oh, it's further back in. Okay. So we've got a. We're not that far from the road. <clears throat> Maybe 50 meters. Here we go. There's my marker rock. There's a big fallen log here. 
runs along with all the beautiful moss on it. And right here below my feet, this is the spot. And you can see the car maybe up there shining. And he's up there, so we're not that far from the road. Uh, this one, this part of the property, the claim is just like the others. There's boulders all over the surface. This was forested some time ago. A lot of them got stirred up. Um, some of them look like they've been here possibly longer than that. There's a big quartz one Andy found back here somewhere. Um, just sitting on the surface that weighs almost a ton. So it doesn't look like much. And in order to get down to where, like, we'd have to trench, you know, we're after going to dig some some holes at the very least, clear out some boulders and do a little little pits um, to be able to start sampling um, the placer gravels and to be able to get down to the bedrock so that we can see what's on that anomaly on the rock. If I'm right, which the lay of the land tells me, we're about 10 meters above the uh, edge of the river, which is 5 to 10 meters above the bedrock. Now, we don't know. The bedrock may come up here, right? Or it may dip down. So it could be higher or lower than we're expecting. But either way, this is where the work's going to be done for the next little while, just taking some samples. And once we get digging into that, which will probably be right here next to this beautiful little mossy log, we'll uh, start filming that. For today, we might move a few gravels. Nothing seriously. You know, some people are really into moss. They love this stuff. It's gorgeous when you really take a look at it. And that tree is just about done. And look at the ground all across here. It's almost. That tree has fed this whole area. Yep. So the surface stuff will eventually, if um, we get to go full tilt on this, will be scraped back and then put back later and all this moss will become moss seed on the top. Which is great stuff again to renew the land. See, look. There's a bit of a little pit right here even. It looks like somebody might have took a sample, or it could even just be a natural indent, but it's a foot deep. I'd say they were close, but, and I know I was, uh, with the GPS, I was within a meter of where the actual anomaly runs right underneath two of them, intersect right underneath my feet. Very dense bush, lots of small, small undergrowth. There's nothing big in here. The biggest ones are six to eight inches, like this guy here. He's about six inches, you know. There's nothing big in here. This stuff would all be considered underbrush. But we will use those. They won't be uh, wasted. We'll cut them into lumber and use them for when we get actually building a sluice because we're going to build our own. I'll take you for a little walk and show off since I'm here because if you like moss, this is the place, man. There's all kinds of it. It's just gorgeous. And back in through. Wherever the dampness can stay for a bit, the moss does really well. And in here, this. That's just beautiful stuff. Getting out in nature, it's just calming. Very beautiful. And you can see boulders throughout here. There's one. Got another one right over here. Gray one. There's another one hidden over there behind that stump right there. Um, yeah, there's some good sized ones sitting on the surface. Another, and there's a lot of them under the mosses and stuff. You can see a big one sticking up over there as well. They're everywhere. 
most people wouldn't even bother pointing out rocks, but I look at this whole thing as it's all part of the experience, not just some of it. <clears throat> this is ancient river, river systems prospecting. This, this was where the river flowed before. What am I looking at, bud? Oh, looky there. Something has come along and dug out all these flakes out of that tree. Well, we do that. You can see the size of its teeth marks right there. Whatever it is, those are teeth marks. Chewing. Could be a mouse. He's pretty busy. Okay, so we'll get to looking around and possibly disturbing some soil and pulling out some boulders and get some footage of that in a bit. Okay, so far we've dug a foot deep hole, two feet long and one foot wide. And we have pulled all these stones out. Boulders, small ones, medium ones. Nothing too big yet. And literally, I want to put the shovel down here, throw the dirt in and put the shovel down into the hole there and they can see how deep it is. That's just dirt, but yeah. Okay, it's only the depth of the shovel, so about eight, nine inches maybe. All right, now I'll get back where we can see everything a little better. We got our buckets here for samples, all kinds of stuff. I got, I had a lot of stuff in my garage, so I just grabbed everything we could throw dirt in. And uh, we're separating out the boulders and putting them over there on purpose. So we can check them with the metal detector instead of throwing them in a dirt pile and you don't know. Uh, I have seen some sparkly stuff, but because the uh, first four inches, five inches of the ground is frozen, it's very hard to tell if what I'm seeing is pieces of ice or not. I actually lost my glasses. Yeah, there looks like there's definitely some iron in that one. And that green would be from copper. You get a green to a blue color from copper. So, oops, missed the pile. And we found one earlier. We set it over here by the tree. We're gonna bring it home because it is just so blue. Wash that up and take a good look at it. Just Rocks are nice. You know, some people like rocks. I like rocks. Right. And to cut that one open and see what the grain looks like when it's in that gorgeous blue, which is, like I said, a sign of copper. Now, we've dug all these boulders out. You're looking at a lot of them. All of them size of my foot and above pretty much. And at the bottom here, there are two large ones. And one of them is soft enough I was chipping at it with the uh, shovel. Yeah, it's right there. Very odd. All right, so my back gave out. It does that because I injured it. But as you can see, I did good for an old guy with a bad back and all that stuff. Can't complain. So, ah, that's a heavy ah he found one. Look at that. Okay, that would be the one from behind, I believe. It's got a lot of, oh, look at that dark color green in it. Now it's wet right now, so it shows better. Man, it's got some serious weight to it too, but yeah, it heavy. probably not enough to, step to set off the metal detector. But we are gonna go over them again in a bit. Okay, so um, we're gonna try and get the, the big ones out of there. There's a couple big ones, so we gotta widen this out a little bit. One of the weird things we found down here was just under the uh, surface layer, about two inches on top of and amongst some of these big gravels. We've, oh, there we go. That one is extremely sharp. And yes, I was cutting into that with the shovel. Now that looks like our, our uh, silver ore and it definitely has the weight of it. But that's bedrock that's been busted off and not rounded. So how did it end up in that hole? But as I was saying, we found charcoal remains, remains of burnt trees down here. 
Um, so this may have been dug at some time in the past and refilled. But if they refilled it, they did a very good job putting all those boulders back in. <laughs> and if anybody's been here and tested it, they have not done so legally. There was no reports whatsoever or communication with uh, the ministry about doing any sampling on here or anything. Um, there wasn't a lot of secrecy, now, though. mind you, well, here's the difference, okay, if there was machinery in here, or if they were pitting in here, that would have been illegal, because they didn't report that. To take a, you know, a bucket-sized sample to dig a potholes, you know, holes, by hand, that's legal when you have a prospecting claim. And right now, that's where we're at. In the next little bit, we're hoping to get to where we get some machinery in here. But first, we want to see if we can find any to make it worthwhile to bring the machinery in, right? Okay, the dirt's from down there. Go, go in the bucket, though. Oh. <laughs> He's throwing away good pay dirt. Oh, it's just to add some mm -hmm. of that. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's got a little bit of the topsoil in it still. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're saying, right. Hey. Sorry. My bad. Not quite getting... Uh, there. You can see the ground is like froze. <laughs> that is surface, and it is ice all through it. Snow's gone except for we had one small patch on the way in. There's one tiny little patch over there. Everything else is gone. Uh, last night for the first time, I was outside. I heard frogs. Just a couple of weeks away from bugs. Yeah, and being out here with the bugs, if you've seen my past video, I was out there getting eaten by a hundred of them at a time. Seriously getting bitten by like a hundred at a time. It was insane. Andy and I spent uh, some time near a creek on the bottom of the claim. We thought we'd check the gravels in it. Because, well, it's actually my buddy's claim. And um, we got eaten so bad, it was horrible. And that's with all the bug gear. They get right in there. They get in each of three your gloves. They get in, in anywhere at all. It's just nuts. So we don't want to be out here for the majority of the bug season. Once that dies down, you're good during the day while it's sunny, and then they come out in the evening. That is red rock. This all is just recently put. Okay. So I think it's my turn to do a little bit of digging because he's pretty sure he's hit bedrock and we got to make sure of that and um, dig it out this round and say yeah. what's going on out here. Okay. So I'll come back in a bit. Yeah, we are happening. Okay. So we got our top soil out. We got our gravelly soil out that was full of these gravels and we got a full bucket of that. We're only down a foot and we've got just over a cubic foot, about 18 inches by 12 inches, 14, dug down and we hit a hard packed layer of gravels. Now the good news about this is in an ancient river system, those boulders gold falls out underneath them. The thing is when there's a hard pack underneath it like that, that acts as a bedrock. So even if we're not down to bedrock, that hard pack acts as one, which means now the gravels and stuff will form around those boulders and hold on to the gold, and it will settle on that stuff. So there's a good chance that even if we don't find something in the overburden, we will find something in this hard pack. So the hard part <coughs> comes into breaking it up so we can get it out of here and take a sample. And again, it is gravels with with a clay-like dirt on it. Just like so tight in there, you're not moving anything. Slamming it with this thing. This thing weighs almost 20 pounds. I'm barely moving any of it. Right? Every once in a while you see something on the surface move a little bit, but that's it. It takes a good chisel. I used to have one. I don't have it anymore. Okay, I think I'm going to scrape some of that off and put it in a bucket because that's taking the wind right out of me. Okay. You know, 
we didn't run the metal detector down there for a while, but we haven't gone down there much more. It would have picked up anyway. Yeah, I should probably do a sweep. Especially if there was anything larger down here. If there was any nuggets, for instance, it should detect reasonable sized nuggets. Uh, we're getting more, that's a little bit of the top soil, soil still, but here we get into a little bit more clay-like stuff. And you can see right here, the top of those gravels that are so packed tight, right, it is really difficult to get them to move at all. This stuff in between them is almost rock hard and it's got a gray color to it which isn't as noticeable up here for some reason more like that one so that's what we're about we're digging that hard hard stuff in capriol I had to help my neighbor one time. He wanted to put a back door into his basement. So we had to dig down at the three foot level. We had to pack a layer of quartz that was so dense, it was only that thick. And it took the two of us, everything we had, three hours. After about an hour, we were halfway through with one little hole. Once we got the first hole through, we were able to chip around it. And in three hours, we got a foot square hole. It took so much energy. I did not realize back then, because I wasn't into prospecting back then, that would have been the layer to find gold in. <laughs> and quartz is well known for gold association, so I, I imagine I would have got something out of it. Maybe not riches, but that's okay. Ah, oh, there we go, that one looks good. Oh, got it loose in there. Man, that stuff's nuts. I got excited when we hit the hard pack because that tells me this has really been there under a lot of pressure. And that pressure, when you go back in time, was glacial. And this is why they call it glacial till, right? And it's usually just under all the fresh dirt that's on top that the trees and everything grow in. When a tree hits this stuff, it takes some work for it to get its roots through that. There's going to be something in there. All right, so we'll come back in a few minutes and show you what it looks like when we get down through this. We're, we're curious, how thick is it? Um, is it on bedrock or is there a layer of something underneath it? Okay, we got a almost a full bucket of pay dirt from the hard pack down there. But we got a large boulder and a couple smaller ones. We just cannot get past. So the man is going to knock the bank back a bit for us and give us a little bit more. It's still considered a, a small hole. It's not a big one. Um, sampling hole. And we're going to fill it back in after we're done. But the key here is we got to get past that or at least into really well that hard pack. Now that's a whole bucket of hard pack, and we still haven't seen any sign of getting through. There's, uh, like I said, a lot of boulders down there, big ones. So we'll come back when we get it cleaned out again, and hopefully we can show you how big those boulders are. Okay, so Andy's widened it out three times, four times the size. Got this nice size coarse boulder out of it. I mean, you get the idea. That's a pretty big boulder. And a lot of small ones. He's doubled our size of our boulders, our pile. And he's tired. <laughs> and you can't buy them. That was some serious bull work. Okay, so we got ourselves pretty much cleared down to those big boulders again. Now, this one where the pry bar is, dark one, 
seems to be sitting on top of the one below it. We need to move those two to be able to move the other one and get underneath it, possibly, or we might have to dig out more. But while we were doing this, Andy decided to uh, run the metal detector over a few rocks, and he got a couple hot rocks that were beeping off. And this one here, he split open, just a little guy. Here, show, show me where you were seeing that. All right, let's come to the light. We go into the light. There's a speck there. Okay, hang on, let me get that in the view. We should point out where it is again. Right there. There's a speck there. And there. And there. And when you shield them, they're still shiny. And another one's on this side right there, below right my there. finger. So we may have visible gold in this rock, and it's a kind of a, a green stone, which is known for having gold north of here. So it's very possible. We're going to put it over here by the tree with our other special rocks that we've been splitting and finding. Uh, one of them appears to have some silver on it, and the other one's just a beautiful color. So. Gonna get back to digging out these boulders. You're on. Okay. We're, you can take a look down here. The original big boulder was here we couldn't get under. There was another one in here that was a big black one. And when I was chipping it out, it actually started to We've gotten in and we've gotten a lot of these smaller gravels out of the back after we got that guy out. Now we got to get this one. <laughs> and there's one behind him. And then hopefully we can dig down now and get underneath this great big guy that might have to be dug out a bit more. We don't know if that's bedrock or if that's a big boulder. I'm guessing a big boulder, but it's hard to tell. I mean, water was coming down this way. It could have smoothed it off. It could be bedrock. Just not likely is my guess. So this stuff is really difficult. You can go at one small area with a little rock in it and keep chipping and chipping. Even the compacted dirt around it is almost a stone. It takes so much to get past it. I have a lot of patience. I don't have a lot of hoops fun anymore, as the uh, Jewish people say. But I, I have the uh, audacity to keep going. And when I wear myself too thin, I'll let Andy take over. Oh, that one got me. I'm backfired in my eyeballs. Because I don't have my glasses. <laughs> Losing your glasses in the bush, how intelligent. Things happen. See that stone, I can tell by the way it's sitting right now. In normal dirt, it would have come up. But because it's in such packed dirt, everything around it is jamming in on it. It's just not wanting to go anywhere. Because those gravels are in there so hard. You keep saying that. Yes. yes. Right now it's a fact of life. All right. Let's try the pry bar. There we go. Oh, he's down. He's he's not just round. He's deeper than he was round. <laughs> so that explains that one being so hard. But they're all like that. None of them are actually coming out easily. Well, they'd be out of here already. So. Gonna get loud. This stuff, when we run it, if I don't find anything in that, I will be blown away. I will be truly shocked. Because I have never come across such compacted stuff. Well, not in 15 years. Okay, I can get behind him here. There we go. 
And you can see what I mean. This stuff is like almost rock hard on the surface. That's harder to break up right now. And that's the, the gravels, the compacted sand. It's harder to break up than that black rock that was flaking like sand. This stuff is very hard by that comparison to it. So there is a good chance. So we clean off our boulders and we take up our samples and there's a good chance there's something there. In the past, I've come across small layers like this, you know, just a half an inch of pack and found a few flakes. When it's this packed, that was laid down all at once and compacted by the glaciers. So it hasn't been touched in a long time. behind him. Not really. Oh, got under him. See, they're jammed in there. Just jammed right in. And you go, what is the X is he after there? There's another one that's uh, iron ore, maybe in it. And it's just, you can crumble it. Right. So that's going to go in the Stuff with the hard pack. And it is interesting to see. Oh, there we go, we got it. No problem, we got that one out now. It's interesting to see how, when I'm looking down here, I see grays in this sand by comparison to the brown up here that is the dirt, right? That's dirt, this is pay dirt. <laughs> That's the difference. All right, I'm going to dig some of that out with the pan, clean it out, get it up out of my way. It's not the easiest way to do it, but this is the real deal. The honest to goodness getting down and getting dirty and gritty. Function in place or mine machinery. This is how you start to sample. Most guys hitting this stuff is, are going to take the surface and that's it. Um, I'm wanting to know what the anomaly is underneath. And if we have this stuff all the way to the bedrock, we're doing good. North of here, the rivers act like a giant sluice. I picked this property, this claim, because that giant sluice dropped all those gravels on this property. And you can see it on the map. It comes up 10 to 20 in places almost 30 meters where the boulders have piled up. And that's what we're finding. The boulders are very near the surface and so far going right through and getting larger. So the idea is under those boulders is where the gold would have dropped. Look at that, there's more of that rock back there I broke off. It actually was flaking off back here on its own. So there's more of it back here. <laughs> I didn't get it all. <laughs> there it is, look at that. And that's something. We have a special little blue bucket, blue lidded bucket for that. Here, I'll let you throw that in there.
Now we're finding heavier sand bud. Got the heavies. This is good to show off. Could be low battery, I don't know. Go for it. Um, in our gravels now, we're getting heavier sands and little stones, little pebbles, tiny ones. That's a good sign. That's where heavies drop out for sure, and that's just around and below these boulders. So, we'll keep digging. Oh. overlapping everywhere and the dirt being so doggone hard it's almost like rock I keep seeing shiny stuff and then it disappears it could be just silicates I don't know but it's in the sand it for now. Okay, so this is the as far as we've got. We've gone from quite a few larger boulders to what looks like smaller mixed boulders um, and lots of little ones and it's packed in there honestly like concrete. It's almost that close. It's crazy. So we've got our samples for today. We're going to load up the uh, cart and we're going to take them home and we'll be panning them out over the next few days. And here, Andy, take this. Just to give you an idea. Okay, so that's just above my knee. I'm five and a half feet tall. Down here, we're looking at just below the waist. So we're two and a half feet down. And you can see this stuff here very coarse right little pebbles and that's what's we're scraping out with uh, homemade crevicing tools right nothing fancy but you get between the rocks real good with these and then you get in with your chisels and your pry bars and everything else and you work them all loose and here we are right we're trying to get to the bottom <laughs> to find the bedrock and the anomaly that's underneath this property we, I don't think, are anywhere near it, but what I'm finding is what I originally got this claim for. This claim was got uh, picked up for the placer gravels, as I've said before, because it's a placer mine. Okay, we are placer gold prospectors. We are ancient river systems prospectors, and that's what dropped this. The ancient rivers, when they were up much higher and the glaciers were heading back north, and they washed out all this stuff. So somewhere hopefully on the bottom, we will find gold, if we ever get to the bottom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're not still filming, right? Oh, I did a little tiny second one. <laughs> 